building a new product or a feature isn't an easy task and having it succeed in a marketplace is even more of a challenge. Good products captivate target audience by addressing customer needs while simultaneously creating a business value that differentiates it from its competitors and scrum helps. Hey guys, this is Archana from Edureka and I welcome you all to this introductory session on scrum. But before we proceed any further, let's quickly go through today's agenda. So guys, we will begin this session by having a brief discussion on agile methodology. Then we will move on to our today's topic, which is scrum. We will discuss what scrum is a little bit about history of scrum different roles events and artifacts involved in scrum and we will also discuss how scrum process actually works in practical and finally we will conclude this session by having a brief discussion on scrum board. So I hope agenda was clear to you guys. Let's get started then. Imagine that you're a part of a team which needs to create a new website. For example, an e-commerce website. You have an overwhelming amount of work to do. You need to build a shopping cart, install an SSL certificate, create a product backlog, create a Facebook page, make a schedule, find a project manager and at least 100 other things that you haven't even thought of yet. Traditionally, most software projects are managed using traditional waterfall model. Let's say you did too. Waterfall model is basically a linear model and it delivers all the product deliverables at one go and at the end of the project. It can be tedious and time consuming approach. And because there is zero visibility here and not much stress is put on client feedback, your product might not be what client exactly wanted. Coming back to your product, which is e-commerce website, the same thing happened. Everything is more expensive than you'd expected. Your product quality could have been a lot better. You and your teammates are stressed out about deadlines and much more. Well, a simple solution for this is to adopt agile methodology. Agile is an iterative approach to project management that builds software incrementally from the start of the project throughout the development lifecycle. Well, it means that the timeline of the project here is fixed and it cannot be extended. While the timeline is fixed, the end products or you can say deliverables of the project are prioritized and delivered in two week cycle, which are usually called as prints. This agile approach introduces many benefits which are not possible in traditional waterfall development approach, such as delivering high value features within short delivery cycles, improve the level of customer satisfaction, deliver high quality product and many more. And that is why Agile is very popular and widely accepted method everywhere. Well, if you ask me, there are multiple approaches to implementing Agile methodology. Though all these Agile methodologies share same philosophy and many same characteristics and practices, when it comes to implementation, each of these methodology has its own view of practice, terminology and tactics. As for today, we're going to discuss one of the popular agile methodology or framework you can say, which is scrum framework. Let's get started there. So scrum is a lightweight agile project management framework that can be used to manage iterative and incremental projects of all types. You can think of it as a collection of roles, events, artifacts, as in things, rules used in combination to create iterative work products in less amount of time. So basically the concept here is to break large complex project into smaller ones reviewing and adapting along the way. So with scrum you write fewer plans and do more in short iterations or cycles that we call sprints. You don't work on separate groups but you work as one dedicated and committed team instead of working on a project with with distant deadline, you constantly deliver functioning products throughout the cycle. You don't use final evaluation. Instead, you receive continuous feedback from your customers and improvise your product. That's what I meant when I said reviewing and adopting along the way. So you get continuous feedback from your users and improvise your product based on that. So that's what Scrum is all about. It's a flexible way of working in rapidly changing world. So this scrum is frequently used in IT projects. Most of the time the websites you visit apps you use were made of scrum. Scrum began in software industry and has since spread to universities, 
military automotive industry FBI to marketing agencies construction crews and beyond anytime you're producing some sort of product be it a software or a simple email campaign scrum can help you organize your team and get more work done in very less amount of time but that still leaves a lot of questions about scrum framework what does the name scrum mean why is scrum used and how exactly does it work well the first step towards answering all these questions is to drill down a bit further into scrum's origin and history so the term scrum was first introduced by two professors in their 1986 Harvard business article where they described a rugby style approach to product development one where a team moves forward while passing a ball back and forth i'm sure you might have heard of the game rugby right that's what i meant to when i say rugby game here so that's what they referred to and that's how scrum came into existence in the following years software developers ken and jeff each implemented their own version of scrum in their own companies and in 1995 the two came together to present and define their version of scrum a developed strategy that evolved into scrum framework that we use today after that there have been many improvements to scrum framework we do have scrum documentation official scrum documentation that you can refer to so that's about the history of scrum now to understand scrum process you have to got to know the people and the parts of the framework so let's begin with the different roles that are involved in scrum team the scrum framework is defined by three core roles the product owner the scrum master and the development team while well, the product owner is accountable for work the team is supposed to complete whether they do it themselves or give it to other team members product owner not only focuses on the work which is to be completed but he also manages business and market requirements the main role of project owner is to motivate the team to align them with the goal and the vision of the project remember that product owner is always a single person and not a committee while product owner can take input from others but when it comes to major making major decisions ultimately the product owner is responsible alone for that next up we have scrum master scrum master is the team's resident facilitator responsible for helping all the team members follow scrum's theories rules and practices they make sure that the scrum team has whatever it needs to complete their work like removing roadblocks that are holding up the progress organizing meetings dealing with challenges and bottlenecks last up we have development team the development team is exactly what it sounds like the people working together to deliver product so despite the development title scrum software background keep in mind that the products developed using scrum can be anything so development teams are given the freedom to organize themselves and manage their own work to maximize the team's efficiency and effectiveness so these are the three important roles which are involved in scrum team what do we have here we have product owner who is responsible for keeping the team in track then you have scrum master who keeps reminding the team about scrum policies rules and practices finally you have a development team who are responsible for developing the project next up we have the things in scrum product or you can say the scrum artifacts well hefty title but the concept is really simple artifacts are basically just physical records that provide project details scrum artifacts include product backlogs print backlog and product increments let's quickly go through each of them first up we have product backlog the product backlog is basically is an ordered list of tasks and requirements the final product actually needs it is constantly evolving and is never complete the product owner oversees the product backlog including how it's made available to the team its content how it's ordered and everything literally everything so the product owner and the rest of the team work together to review the product backlog and make adjustments whenever necessary as product requirements keep changing throughout the life cycle so like i said agile is an iterative approach so is scrum so the product owner and the rest of the team keep updating product backlog according to the requirements that keep changing during different iterations so for each item in the product backlog you should add some additional information like the description the order as in the priority order within which the whole backlog is listed the estimate time and the value it has in the business apart from this you can add many other things anyway next up we have sprint backlog 
Sprint backlog is a list of items from the product backlog that need to be worked on during a sprint. So team members sign up for tasks in the sprint backlog based on their skills and priorities. So as the sprint evolves, it is possible that slight changes to the sprint backlog might occur. A new understanding of the feature the team is working on could mean that something is added to or removed from the sprint backlog. So the sprint backlog is a real time picture of the work that team currently plans to complete during a sprint. Well, if it seems too much theory, don't worry about it. When we discuss how the scrum process actually worked, you'll understand what a sprint backlog is. Moving on, we have something called burn down charts. A burn down chart is a graphical representation of amount of estimated remaining work. Typically, the chart will feature the amount of remaining work, perhaps usually in hours, on the vertical axis with time along the horizontal axis. So, when using a burn down chart, remember that if the chart is deviating from the expected remaining estimates, this is only a pointer. You still need to investigate and understand the cause before you actually can draw any conclusion. Next up, we have something called product increment. A product increment is the sum of product work completed during a sprint combined with all the work completed during previous sprints. So basically, in other words, product increment is the new code which has been written to enhance the features or usability of your product. So when you add a new set of code to your sprint, this new code has to combine with the existing code to work well. If your new features work well on their own, but break some existing feature in your product, your product increment is not potentially shippable. So that's it guys. With this, we have covered all the key terms that you might come across in Scrum framework. Well, if you are confused from all these terms, do not worry about them. You will be able to understand them very easily and use them when you adopt Scrum methodology. So next up we have the scrum process as in we're going to discuss how the scrum process actually works. It's very simple just few steps. So the entire scrum process starts with a product owner. So he's the person who represents the final user's best interest and has the authority to say what goes into the final product. This product owner creates a product backlog, which is a list of tasks and requirements the final product needs. The important part is that the backlog that is the product backlog must be prioritized. And that's the job of the product owner. Here's a simple example. Let's say if I were to create a scrum design to design a car, items like must have an engine would be top of my list because without an engine, car wouldn't run. Must be painted red would be my last priority, or it could be last in my product list because. Painting a car is anything which you can do later. So it's not of a much priority. So that's how you make a list as in you organize all the items in your list based on priority. So the first step is product owner creates a product backlog. Now the team which is the product owner and the scrum team get together for sprint planning, which is when the entire team decides together what to work on from the product backlog list. So a sprint basically is a predetermined timeline within which the team completes set of tasks from the backlog. The length of this time depends on the needs of the team, but usually two weeks is pretty typical. At the beginning of the sprint, the developers and the product owner agree on the items from the product backlog, which they will complete during that sprint. This subset of items from the product backlog, which they have extracted to complete in that particular sprint, is what we call the sprint backlog. So the scrum team isn't just sitting there with blinders on because they get together every day to communicate their progress and issues. This meeting is what we call daily scrum and it is overseen by the scrum master whose job is to keep everyone on the efficient path. So during the daily scrum, each development team member expresses what task he accomplished since the last meeting, what he is planning to complete until the next meeting, and whether there are any impediments or obstacles on his task while he's completing them. The scrum master who is basically like the coach on the field with the scrum team removes distractions and ensures that the daily scrum meeting is completed within 15 minute time box. So basically during a sprint, so develop a project they have their daily scrum meeting where they discuss everything. That's what the second step is all about. At the end of the sprint, sprint review meeting is organized by the product owner. All the stakeholders and the scrum team attends the sprint review meeting during the sprint review meeting. 
the development team demonstrate what they have completed since last sprint and the product owner gives information about what is remaining on the product backlog and the estimated time to complete the project if needed. So remember guys at the end of the sprint period the team should have a functional piece of something to show their work. The important thing is that product must actually work at the end of the each sprint. So that's what I meant how agile is different from traditional waterfall approach. Unlike in waterfall approach where you have final product at the end in scrum which is a agile methodology you have a properly functioning product at the end of every sprint. Moving on after the sprint review meeting the development team gathers up in sprint retrospective meeting during the sprint retrospective meeting team discusses what they have done good and what they could have done much better. Maybe it's a tech limitation holding them back or maybe one team member is overloaded with task. The team decides how to fix these problems with the intent of improving their efficiency on how they do their work. Theoretically the team should be more efficient and produce more work with each new cycle and they try to achieve that and discuss on how to achieve that in the sprint retrospective. So the entire cycle starts with the sprint planning and ends with the sprint review or you can say sprint retrospective until either the deadline has been reached. The budget is exhausted or the product owner is satisfied satisfied with the final product whichever comes first. So after a sprint retrospective the cycle again begins you have certain other things which are left out in the product backlog. They are put to the sprint backlog again the scrum meeting the scrum owner comes and pushes up the spirits of everyone in the team. Then you have another product another addition to the product and then you have sprint retrospective. The cycle repeats until the deadline has been reached or the budget is exhausted or the product owner is satisfied with the final product whichever comes first. So that's it guys in a nutshell that is how scrum works. An important principle in scrum is the idea of transparency. All team members involved should be aware of what everyone else is working on progress being made and what the team is trying to accomplish. And that's why making things visible for all to see is very important in scrum process. A big piece of this is scrum board. This is place where you can organize your backlog as well as the tasks that are being worked on in the current sprint and their progress. Scrum boards can be as simple as a whiteboard with sticky notes for each task or it can be as complicated as a specialized software with charts and task tracking features and all that. Well it literally depends on what you want to do and how you want to do it. Well that's it guys with this we have come to the end of the session. So guys as you can see learning basics is pretty easy in scrum. The hardest part is learning the key terms involved and staying true to the rules and the guidelines that make scrum work. With scrum you're not creating more work for yourself instead you're being more efficient with your time so that you can spend less time at the office and more time with the people and the things you love. So if you are tired of your current methodologies of project management why not give scrum a shot. Thank you guys if you have any doubts or any queries or if you have anything to discuss please do put them in the comment section below and we will get back to you as soon as possible. And if you have liked the session please do click on the like button. And I'll meet you in next session with another interesting video on Scrum. Thank you guys. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!